Hi, this is Marty Major with FLIR Security's TCX Training Department. We're here today to talk about just a general overview of the Horizon slash Meridian Admin Center. Now you can see on the desktop right here, we have two different icons. Uh, this is the Admin Center. This is a Meridian machine, as you can see by the uh, heading here. Uh, one thing to note that the Admin Center client or the Admin Center application itself on Horizon and Meridian is identical uh, and it is different than what Latitude uses. However, the Control Center application is the universal application that we're able to see and manipulate and record and export and all that kind of good stuff uh, from our client application. So this is shared across all three and the Admin Center for Meridian and Horizon uh, shares the same look right here. So you can see at the top mine is a Meridian but Horizon looks identical and performs exactly the same way. So you can see right here, we're just going to log into the Meridian Admin Center. Uh, and we're just going to take a, a couple steps through just so we can get a quick overview of the Admin Center application uh, and how easy it is to configure and use right out of the box. So here we go. This is the dashboard. And you can see on the left-hand side, we do have a sidebar. Uh, it comes with home, uh, system, cameras, users, and then alarms and um, events and stuff. So uh, if you look on the dashboard itself, there's a couple of different ways to get to different things. For instance, here's camera settings, which is the same as going to camera settings here. Users is the same as users here. And of course, we have a couple of other things here in our recommended settings. And then we have some advanced uh, settings here. We can go into rules and alarms and get those set up. Uh, we can actually go to our storage. Uh, we have a site set up uh, so we can organize things that are like each other in some way, whether physical or uh, just how they operate. Uh, and then we have a maintenance section right here. We're going to go through each one of these here. I'm just uh, touching on them now so you can see. And in the applications that we can use in conjunction with Admin Center, here we have Control Center, uh, our web client, our new EZ client, and we also have our DNA application. So if we just start up right here in the camera settings, you can see, and again, we're not going to make a huge dive into the system. We're just going to sort of give you an overall heads up on how the application displays things and how you can find all the information and change that information if you desire. Uh, here in our camera settings right here, you can see the uh, red indicator shows that it is recording. If I hover my mouse over that, you can see that it is. And we have our various settings right here. We could simply rename our cameras uh, in this manner here uh, to whatever we'd like. Uh, this is the recording mode. And notice we can change that to either off, uh, always, uh, motion-based recording, and we also have a custom recording schedule, which we can actually go into if you could check it out here. Uh, you can see the three different types of recording we've got right here. We have continuous, we have motion, and we have off. And you can use this grid right here. You can see right now it's all continuous. Uh, we could change that. If we wanted to, say, take off Saturday and Sunday, we simply, oops, uh, we simply click on the style that we want to change it to, and we grab and drag like so. Uh, so maybe we would want it on motion on the weekends. We could do the very same thing here with the other day. Uh, and then maybe uh, if there are some times where we don't want it at all, like maybe we decided on, uh, you know, Tuesday for whatever reason, uh, we decided not to record because there's something going on there that's important. We don't want to record. Whatever it is, uh, you can see very simply done. And they can easily overwrite them all. If I wanted to go back to recording continuous, simply drag across the entire scheme, and it's back to continuous. Uh, right here we can change, of course, our resolution, our frame rate, uh, and the um, quality uh, that we're trying to record at. And you can see there's high, medium, uh, low, and then a uh, disk saver, excuse me. Uh, and then uh, notice right here that this is a bitrate profile. It used to be called the quality profile. And you can see the bitrate profile definitely has a bearing on the bitrate itself. If I go from a medium bitrate, which is listed right here, uh, up to a high bitrate, you can see that it does, of course, change that setting. Now, one of the other cool things about this is if you have a lot of cameras, well, up to eight on this Meridian machine, up to many more than that uh, on the Horizon machine, uh, you could uh, set a particular camera to whatever you like it to be here, and then simply come up here to the copy configuration. Notice because it is highlighted already, it is uh, the source camera, and then you have a series of choices here that you can copy to your other cameras. Note that uh, if they have some configurations that cannot be copied to the other cameras, of course, that other camera does not show up in here. You'll note that my cameras, uh, I have a wide array of cameras right here. We have a an analytics camera. Uh, we have a um, a UHD or a big 4K camera, and then we have an aerial camera as well that's a 1080p camera. So of course some of the settings, if I took the 4K camera settings or the aerial cameras, for instance, I could change them. If I come down here to this 
uh, Quasar Gen 2 with a 4K camera and try to send its settings, the 4K uh, resolution, down to any of the cameras. Of course, none of my other cameras have those, so they would not appear in here. Uh, copy configuration is a very easy tool. It saves you a lot of time, and you can't get into trouble because if there are settings that cannot be copied, it simply removes the cameras that don't have those options. All right, uh, that's the camera settings. Again, if we come back to our home, we can see... Oh, I'll save the settings that I just made right there. Uh, also, I forgot to apply up here, and that's why it asked me to save that. Uh, notice we do have the interactive help files here, just like we do in Latitude, that if you click it on any particular page that you're on, it takes you right to the page that you're working on and assists you with walking right through all of the things to do on this page. So if we go back to the next section, then um, from our uh, main section right here, we have our users. Again, we could go uh, using the sidebar to do that as well. I'm just going to walk through the database or through the... Um, dashboard itself uh, and from here we have the different users and of course here's the add user uh, we could uh, we have users and groups as well so here we have the user groups notice there are some default user groups that are listed right here uh, there is a guests one that I think I may have added myself because I didn't give it a description uh, and I can simply add groups at my will I name it right here I put a description I give it a PTZ priority right which will be uh, used by all the people that are in that group. Uh, the lower the number, the higher the priority. So a PTC priority of one means uh, you rule, nobody can beat you. Uh, and down here we have all the individual privileges that can be set for the particular group. And of course we have these same options when we go to the individual users themselves. Uh, for camera permissions, of course, we uh, simply move the cameras over that we want uh, our group to have access to. Uh, they started off here, I actually just made it a guest group earlier and they moved them over so it's using that by default. But you can see it's quite simple to create a group and if I wanted to create just a user uh, I could click on add users and again this all this information right here is mandatory based on the little red asterisk on the left hand side the email and the phone number of course are not. Uh, now also once you create the user you can simply assign them to the particular user group that you want to assign them to or conversely like we just saw before that we can create the group itself and then assign users to that group. Very simple stuff. Let's go back again. Uh, now, right here we have uh, uh, for a system uh, sign-off report. This is great. It's always loved by the integrators uh, that we partner with because once uh, the system is all set up, they run the uh, sign-off report. They both sign off on it. Everything's good to go. The customers and the VARs and us, we're all in the same loop so everybody knows what's going on. If you go over here to the, sec to the middle section right here for the advanced settings, our rules and alarms uh, are listed right here. Uh, we actually have another video on rules and alarms and how to create them. You can add the alarm type uh, and then go through here. Please watch the video for how to actually set up a, an alarm in the Horizon and Meridian Admin Center. And then, of course, we have rules here. Once you uh, create the alarms themselves, you can use them within the rules uh, based on the settings that are in here. Again, see the video on how to set those up. If we go back again then, uh, we can see here we have our storage setup. This gives us a nice overview of the storage drives that are in use, the containers, the uh, uh, KB size of the drive itself, right? We uh, like that uh, to be universal. Uh, and then all of the individual cameras right here and what their storage capacities uh, hopefully are. And actually we'll see that on the other camera page. It shows you at the bottom a nice little indicator on how much storage you're supposed to get. And again, back to the main uh, dashboard, uh, we now have uh, something here called Site Setup. Now, Site Setup is one of the uh, great functions, I think, within uh, the entire uh, FLIR uh, VMS system, both Latitude and the Horizon Meridian platform. Uh, sites allow us to uh, group things in like manners. Uh, for instance, if I have a, a uh, you know, the example I use in my Latitude class, if I have a hospital and then it has three different floors, I'll have a site called hospital, and I'll have sites within that site called first floor, second floor, third floor, and then I'll simply take a uh, layout that we've created in Control Center and assign it to that site. So therefore, when somebody is in Control Center, however, you, whenever you set up sites, this is exactly what it looks like in Control Center for the operator, and they can find uh, things and get to them very quickly. They get a report that there's uh, something going down on the second floor of the hospital. They click hospital, they click second floor, they click the layout, they're looking at all the cameras that are on that floor. So it's uh, that's one example of how sites can be used. Uh, again, we have another video on how to create and use sites within the Meridian and Horizon platform. Let's go back again to the dashboard then. We have, uh, that was our site setup we just talked about for maintenance. Uh, we can uh, do backups, uh, we can do automated backups, which if you just uh, engage it, of course, you could simply tell it what day and at what time uh, you want it to back up your system. 
let's come out of here. We can also export uh, logs, of course, uh, tech support. When we're working on uh, issues uh, with getting things back up and running. They like to see the logs to take a look at and see what exactly happened. Now we're on to the far right side. And again, these are just the applications that go with uh, the admin center application. Uh, the control center, of course, is the client application that's universal across all of FLIR's uh, VMS platforms. Uh, we have the web client or the new easy client. And that's going to be another um, webinar, uh, excuse me, a training video that we'll be able to uh, figure out how that works. It's very simple. It's in the name, right? It's in the easy client. And then we have finally the DNA application or our camera finder application. For further FLIR security training, go to FLIR.com, then Products and Security. From the Security page, you would come to Support and then Training. On the training page, we have it divided currently between in-person training and online training. The in-person training includes certification classes in Latitude and many of our thermal technologies. The online training includes upcoming security webinars, which you see up here on the left, and recorded webinars, which of course uh, continues to grow as we do the current webinars. But over on the right-hand side, you'll see our online training video library where we cover a number of different things in our repertoire. If we go to Latitude, you can see we have a series of Latitude training videos like this one that you just listened to, and uh, we are adding to this list, and it is growing fast.